This is the Sami knife. It is a symbol of Sami culture and history and the demands of the wilderness. Welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about the history and the use of the Sami knife. And just to get started on sort of the basic history of the Sami knife and I suppose the Sami people. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Sami people is a, a indigenous people from Northern Europe in the area of Nor Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. And for millennia, these people have mostly lived as nomadic or semi-nomadic peoples, uh, where some of them would follow the flocks of reindeer uh, as they moved around. And then some would live down by the sea and primarily live off of fishing by winter and then go up to the highlands uh, in the summer and collect uh, reindeer or, sorry, and hunt uh, reindeer and uh, collect berries and various other things to eat. Now, the Sami culture itself is very broad and deep, so I'm not, not going to get too much into that. But trying to read sort of the history about this, I could not find any conclusive answer whether or not the Sami people actually made iron tools. And I'm very skeptical to the fact that they did. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any evidence of uh, mining or any forges or things like that made by the Samis. Um, it would sort of go against the nature of their culture and uh, existence, basically, because of their nomadic nature. You can't really set up uh, mines and forges and such when that is your lifestyle. But um, we know that uh, Sami people and Norse people and Swedes and Finns and Russians uh, started trading with Samis uh, uh, basically as long as they have existed in that sort of general area of the nord of northern Europe. Uh, there are Viking sources uh, describing trade with the Sami people, and they would basically trade with each other. And there's not a lot of evidence of there being a, a lot of hostile contact between Samis and other peoples. Uh, of course, uh, that's not to say they, there wouldn't be, but uh, either way, the point is. The Samis would trade things like uh, salted fish, uh, reindeer hide, and other sort of products from the highlands of northern uh, Europe. And in return, they would get things like tools, and that's where things like this come in. There isn't any conclusive evidence as to the exact origins of Sami knives, but we know that this general style of Sami knife has existed for about two, three, four hundred years. Uh, it's very hard to pin uh, down. But imagine that you're a nomadic people and you don't want to be lugging around a lot of stuff that you don't really need. Uh, so you'd want a knife that can do a lot of different tasks. And that's this is superb at uh, doing that. Our general overview is uh, about a six to eight inch blade. That is uh, sort of the common uh, size this sort of sheath. Uh, of course, you have other styles. You have smaller knives that are made uh, sometimes wholly, where the scabbard is made wholly from bone or partially from bone and partially from leather. But those are usually smaller sized knives that are meant for uh, fine tasks and uh, such. such. Uh, but this is mostly for uh, chopping down small trees, skinning reindeer, uh, all sorts of stuff that you can only imagine. This is pretty much a Nordic Bowie knife. Uh, it's really really good and today these have a special place in sami culture and they are widely uh, adopted by many people who spend a lot of time outdoors and these are part of the uh, various sami uh, folk costumes uh, which of course vary depending on region um, but these even in this this uh, utilitarian form it's still a valid uh, accessory to that uh, oh, sorry those uh, costumes uh, of course, you have shorter ones uh, that are more ornate with things like silver fittings and so on. Uh, but this is still a valid uh, accessory, as I said. And also, these have been to some degree adopted by uh, military forces, as le at least in the Norwegian military. Uh, these have been issued to some units, like uh, artillery rangers, uh, artillery spotters, uh, sorry, um, and other sort of light infantry and specialized uh, units uh, of course i can't tell if i can't tell you if they are uh, general issue every year to every single one but i know they have been uh, bought in bulk by the norwegian military and 
given out to their soldiers. And they are also very uh, popular as private purchase items uh, for use by uh, soldiers. This is a piece made by uh, Knife Smith Strömming out of Karasok in Norway. And really, if you want to get one of these for its utility purposes, you really need to get one of theirs. The, they have been making these for, for 200 years and their quality is superb. So I can absolutely recommend it uh, to anyone who's looking for a good utility knife. And now let's take a look at the knife uh, itself. So starting at the top uh, here with the sheath, we have this uh, piece of leather right here, which you are supposed to hang on your belt. Uh, and this is most commonly seen hung on the, on the left side uh, from special knife belts uh, that the Sami people have. But really any belt will do and you can hang it from a, a carabiner from you know, your trousers or whatever. But one on the left side, that is the traditional way. Um, then we have a brass piece on the front here uh, with my name on it. I got this as a gift many years ago. Then we have the uh, signature... Uh, four pieces of felt that are in the Sami colors. Uh, this is the signature of uh, Strömäng, the, the knife smith. Uh, so no one else can use this, and this is a sign of good quality. Moving on, we have decorations, of course, as you've already seen. Not really too much to say there. Then we have at the end here, we have this opening that will allow um, anything from water to blood from dripping out and one of the stories that i heard is that this is uh, to allow reindeer blood to drip out but uh, i'm a little bit skeptical about that of course reindeer blood will drip out here but if your knife is soaked in reindeer blood uh, you really should wipe it off before you put it back into the sheath uh, so that's just my take uh, i'm not going to uh, question it uh, if that's really the case but Moving on, we have at the back here, we have the company logo. Oh, sorry, I held it upside down. Uh, company logo. Yep, not too much there. And then let's move on to the blade. Or, sorry, the knife itself. Uh, and when you're opening this type of sheath, uh, they do also offer uh, sheaths that are uh, where the handle is sticking out and it's held in place by a piece of uh, leather that's fastened with, with uh, Velcro, but that's not really the traditional style. And to open this, you really want to pinch the sides of the sheet together and just undo this carefully so I don't smack anything. Just pull it out and there you have the knife. So starting at the bottom here, we have a brass tang, oh sorry, a brass uh, plate at the bottom here, and it is a full tang, so it goes all the way through here, and it's then spot welded uh, at the bottom here, and in my 14 years of having this knife, I've never had a problem with the rattling or the blade starting to come loose or anything, uh, so really can't complain there. Uh, the handle is made from birch, uh, which is a very good uh, material for knife uh, handles, I think. Uh, never failed me, never been uncomfortable. And then we have a brass ring here, separating the handle from the blade. Uh, and the brass has a special uh, sort of significance in Sami culture and lifestyle and so on. Uh, apparently the brass has healing uh, capabilities and um, all sorts of uh, culturally significant things that I uh, don't really know too much about, but um, still this is not, not uncomfortable at all to hold and grip. Now moving on, we have a carbon steel blade. Uh, they do sell this in stainless steel uh, blades, but really the uh, carbon steel blade is the the way to go. Uh, I've had this for, as I said, 14 years, and I've only had to sharpen it once, which goes to show uh, you don't really need these to be razor sharp as well. 
move on to, to the other side. We have the company logo again. Focus, focus. There we go. Yeah. Nothing too special there. If we take a look, closer look at the blade itself, it's, it's sort of, it widens towards the end here uh, to get better mass here. Uh, so when you're chopping, you would use this section right here. Uh, that's where you get most of the force. And you can, of course, use this for almost any task that you would use a knife for. Uh, uh, and maybe I need to say that this is not really a weapon. Uh, it's not a combat knife. It's not meant to stab people with. Uh, so uh, don't look at it from that point of view. Uh, it's a utility knife, after all. You have a standard sort of curve here uh, with no false edge. Blade has the same thickness all the way to the end. I forgot the thickness of it, but I'm going to put it up on the screen here while I edit this. And again, when you put it back into the sheath, you want to pinch, pinch it so you don't cut the sheath when you put it in and out. Just put it back in. And there we go. And now I think it's time for us to go outside. And I'm going to show you how to use this. Okay, so now that we are out in the natural habitat of the Sami knife, I'm going to demonstrate its capabilities. And I found this dead branch. I uh, don't want to do this on live trees unless I have to. And one thing to say before I start using this, uh, the preferred method of using this is with this grip right here. Just at least that works best for me. I have seen some use this grip where, it, where I hold with just the thumb and uh, these two fingers right here uh, and it does give you a bit of leverage but it also uh, puts a lot of strain on the inside of your uh, hand so uh, it makes it a bit uncomfortable to use after a while so this is my preferred method and it works uh, great most of the time And just like that, it works great. Uh, now, of course, this is a dead piece of wood, so it doesn't uh, give have as much uh, resistance in it as a live piece of wood would have. But uh, yeah, this works pretty great, uh, uh, as you can see. Let's just do it a little bit more. Just to show you guys. Yep. Give away these small branches. Works great and it gives actually a pretty good cut on this piece of wood right here. Of course, you can use it for uh, whittling as well uh, if you need to start a fire. Uh, and in that case, this is my preferred grip. Uh, just hold it a little bit further up ahead from the grip and use your thumb to uh, have better control. Works pretty great as you can see. Okay, so let's try the knife on this birch right here. Oh, and there we go. And easy. 
So that's pretty much it for this video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Uh, this is a video I've been meaning to make for a long time and, and finally decided that I just had to do it. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below and goodbye.